Thank you to Waterwheel Little Horse for their generous donation on Patreon. If you'd like to join them in their generosity, the link to my Patreon page is in the description. Hello everyone, my name is Dyker Link the Trained I'm Professional, and I'm a little tired today, so I'm sorry if I'm a little more subdued in this particular recording. Just kind of an off day in general. So surely that's the perfect time to jump into a game that's part of a series that has been the most singular, emotionally taxing series I have ever been subjected to. Yo! Yo, Yow! Hello! Fuck! <laughs> By the way, before I get started on today's episode, I do want to make quick mention to something that I'm sure is getting blasted all over the comment section as, uh, for the as of yet, for me, unreleased episode of episode 68 of Echo, which was recorded before the announcement was made by the Echo Project of a sequel to Echo. It is currently called Arches. Uh, it is uh, not a multi-route uh, sequel, but it's following the, the two characters that came to investigate Echo three years after... Um, after the events of the main game and so that will mark the fourth official release in the echo series uh made by the echo project there's also benefits that's the main game the smoke room uh route 65 um then it'll be project arches and then of course benefits which was made by someone else but it is canon so that's very cool. It's set for a release sometime early next year, so don't don't hold your breath yet. Uh, also, Echo Project is also known to change their names, like Kamia, the uh, Adastra sequel, which uh, will come out for pay, uh, public peoples soon, uh, and I will be playing that. Don't you fucking worry. That was originally called Adastra 2, and I even was like, ew, kind of to that title, but... Yeah, I'm excited. Apparently, it's uh, Project Arches is going to be a kind of a it's a single route, but multi path uh, multi path uh, kind of thing. So you're there's going to be one route. You're not going to have like five fucking different people to follow, but there's going to be a lot of different consequences. So I am curious to see how it goes. Yo yo, hello. <laughs> The big cat takes my hand and gives it a firm, aggressive shake. As a friend of Nikolai's, I trust you share in his will and purpose. I raise my eyebrow. I barely make out the trace of an eastern accent when Yao speaks. Oh, that's not what I was trying to do. But, uh, yeah. He speaks almost as clearly as Nikolai does, but with some musical quality. Hell, might even be better at putting words together than I can. But I'm still mulling over his introduction. Will and purpose? He's not a minor, Yao. Oh. It's a, it's a, man, I must be fucking tired, because I did it in the right voice and everything, but I still was like, why is he saying that about Nick? <laughs> he is Nick. This is fucked. Oh, he looks so disappointed. Oh. Oh, he looks so disappointed. Get a look at his face. I apologize. Ah, oh, look at him. He's all flushed. He's... Hunched over out of myself. I see that I have made presumptions. It don't matter. But with that topic breached, I suspect it is not mandatory for you to share in our trade to understand our obstacles in time. Obstacles he does not need to worry himself with. Obstacles he might find common in his own trade. Not likely. <laughs> But I can't tell him that. I will remind you that such obstacles will be universal to every chapter of labor in this country. Perhaps true. But he is just someone I want to help, not recruit. Very well. Let's move and be quick about this. We can talk as we walk. The tiger motions for us to move away from the small cabins settled next to an exterior quarry, more in the direction of a pathway up a hillside. My thoughts linger on Nick telling this man that he wanted to help me, which seems more forward than normal for him. I smile a bit on the inside. 
but I try not to show it. Remember that we're, uh, we got a bit of a contact high, so I guess, uh, my current drowsiness is appropriate, given the circumstances. He ta he's talked about me before? Tiger, who seems lost in thought, snaps his attention back to me. Never. Never? That makes more sense, considering Nick's privacy. I can't help feeling a little sour now. There are many bands of men in our company who I do not get to meet. Miners assigned to different foremen do not tend to see or speak to one another. Three foremen are assigned to separate sites within the mine. I have only seen two of these higher-ups and have spoken to one. The new young men who arrive from the trains tend to, bo tend to have bodies much like you do. At least in the beginning. I don't much care for how he says that. You look like you take care of yourself. His physique might even be better than mine. I have worked in engineering positions in many towns and in many places. Most importantly, I have been very fortunate. But don't you live in Nick's bunkhouse? I meant that I am still whole. And you are also very knowledgeable. The tiger grunts. Yao is getting a lot of fucking expressions. I like it. But you know they do not like that. No. They do not. Guess that means your bosses love me. Oh, wit can be dangerous too, my friend. Oh boy, there it is. Lord. As we, si as we hit the top of the hill, the entrance of a mine shaft appears on the horizon. Rows of carts and tracks wheel out of it, and several shapes trot out of the entrance. The tiger beckons us forward. An old-looking polecat sees us and gives us an apprehensive look and starts speaking in a language I don't understand. Yao speaks back in the language, crossing his arms. The polecat shrugs, shakes his head, and keeps pulling the cart full of chalky-looking chalky rocks forward. Come on. I stare at the mouth of the mine shaft. It's much safer looking than the whole Jack had us use, but that doesn't make me feel better. It's still that horrible place with its horrible smell. Sam, you can stay out here if you like. We can find what you're looking for. It's much safer for us to look than you. I'm here. I'm gone. Nick gives me a concerned look, but Yao's expression is quizzical. We are not going deep enough for anything dangerous. A visitor will be safe under our guidance. That isn't true. I'm not letting Nick out of my sight down there. I won't let him be alone looking for that money I dropped. The rush of air from the entrance of the mine shaft brushes through my fur. It always feels to me like caves are breathing at the entrance. That would just be the difference in air pressure. Yao yeah, leads us inside. Nikolai Chapter Two. Dun 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 dun. Are we getting something spooky? There are paws. There are handprints everywhere. Holy shit! Yo, you see all this shit? Oh my Christ! And they're all like hand hands, but like the fingers are really long. And. There are too many for it to be, like, one... There's They're too close together to be multiple beings. There's no scuff marks in between them, so they have to be moving on those paws. And they're all way too wide to be just one thing, unless that thing is huge. Well, that's fucking spooky scary. Me no likey. Alright, here we go. The sloping ceilings in this part of the mine are much higher than I thought they'd be. The pat- Ugh, fuck! And patches of light seep through exposures in the ceiling. A raised wooden building with glass windows on a platform glows from the yellow light of the oil lanterns inside. Menzel, our foreman, is stationed there. But he takes his lunch alone, and does not commiserate or socialize with lower stations. Hmm. What's wrong? The windows. I just noticed that they're on every side of the structure. He may see us. And if he does, he will see three shapes in work clothes moving in the dark. His belly will be most important to him at this time. 
Ha ha ha. Nice. Let's go. Oh, Jesus, this is a new picture. That's... Oh. It looks like a real picture, but with a drawing on top of it. That's cool. We see the silhouettes of the man, man's head at the table against the yellow light as we creep by. He doesn't rise as we pass by. Ooh. Nick, reala Nick releases his breath when we turn a corner. We find an even larger room with a higher ceiling. Six tunnels exit this huge room. In the middle of the room, there I can see a dark chasm. There's a winch for operating an elevator, but the shaft goes so deep that I can't see much of anything past the chasm's surface. A sense of fear and respect wash over me. Respect. The same kind of feeling I get when I'm in church or somewhere very old. But I don't understand why I feel that here. We go left here for the first tunnel. I can't help but stare up again. The beams of light that penetrate this room make it feel more like a cathedral than a mine. And the sickle-shaped rocks quietly drip into puddles. I haven't seen anything like this before. Yao turns around, as if confused, and beckons me with his paw. Don't stand under the stalactites. The activity in the mines could dislodge them. The what now? Nick hems. Nikolai hems. If the rock formation clings tightly to the ceiling, it's called a stalactite. If the formation's on the floor, it's like a termite mound, it's a stalagmite. I don't think I ever needed to know this. That's how I feel every time one of these novels goes way into detail about shit that really does not affect the plot. But it's like, oh, look what you studied today. The badger shakes his head as if this is common knowledge. But now you will never forget it. Maybe Nick will be fine down here after all. We do not have unlimited time. Please quicken your paces. The light dims as we leave the larger room behind us, entering a more narrow tunnel. After five or so minutes of walking, I see the tiger's ears swivel in the dim light. We turn right here. Right where? I gasp as the tiger takes a sudden right, disappearing into the wall. When I turn, I see there's a tunnel camouflaged by the side of the wall. I would have missed it entirely if not for the tiger. How did you know this was here? The airflow changes when it is more than one place to exit. It is not like the popping in your ears that you get when you climb mountains. It feels more like wind. The tunnel he leads us down has no natural lighting or torches, and the path is lined with rocks. All the light we have is from our own lamps and helmets. I grab Nick's sleeve, but I feel him flinch. He leans in close to me and whispers, Everything is fine, Sam. Yao knows the way. I'm whispering now, too, struggling to find my words. No, it isn't. There are still things I haven't told you about what happened down here. Sam! Most are scared of the mine at first, and a terrible thing happened to you down here. So I can only imagine how much worse it must be for you. But I have experienced terrible things in the dark, too. And there are far more dangerous things than Jack. You're talking about Jack? I'm thrown, uh, I'm thrown by how good the tiger's stubby ears are. Well, who isn't, really? I smooth down the tufts of fur on my head while drips of water and faint pickaxe, no pickaxe noises ring in the distance. I mean, of course, considering the accident and all. I understand the necessities of your actions, and I am sympathetic. I force out a laugh, and my echo draws out how strained it sounds. You know? I rub my face. You know. I can almost taste the venom in my own words as they hiss out of my own mouth. How dare he tell? Doesn't he care at all about what could happen to me? Before you vocalize your grievance, it was I who insisted on knowing your circumstance. I will not dig in the dirt on my lunch break, searching for somebody else's money, without there being a good reason. And what was such a reason? Pray tell. The tiger stops walking and turns to look at me. Jack was the reason. Nick and I both lived with him for over a year. 
There's an edge in his voice. He wronged so many, and I will not let him wrong another. The heat in my face is cooling off, and I feel momentarily a little embarrassed with myself. Sounds like you didn't much like him. I heard the tiger inhale. I do not wish to speak ill of the dead. But Jack was an unethical drunk who substituted earnesty for wit and could only communicate with playful over familiarity. My cheeks are burning now. How come I was the only one who was fooled by Jack? His head was full of dreams, and he boasted grand promises, but he had no imagination for procedure or plan. In truth, he disdained them. I do not wish to know how he endured for so long as he did, but it does not surprise me that a man such as he perished in a place such as this. We're merely standing in a wrong place, or breathing in the wrong fumes could make any day your last. Yao's voice lowers to a whisper, too. So I am sorry that he forced your hand. But I only think you were unfortunate enough to be caught in his inevitable trajectory. He turns away from me, leading with the lantern in his hand, and I'm just dizzy with self-disgust. We're here. I don't know what he means at first, but I notice now that we're atop an overhang. The music is really good in this fucking... Jesus, the sound direction is incredible. He shines his light over the pit below, and I can spy shelves of bedrock leading to darker spaces below. The rope is still attached. Before I can say anything, the tiger is climbing down the rope. Nikolai is observing, holding it to keep it steady. We look at least 30 feet above the first shelf. Yao rapidly descends, clenching the rope and clearing the gap between us and the floor of the pit in only about a minute. Then my chest clenches when I see the tiger roll on his back, rolling between a space and the shelves and disappearing. Where's he going? The tiger's voice shouts back, but I don't see him. I'm still close! The second drop isn't nearly as high. Nikolai adjusts the light in his cap to make it brighter. I shift the weight on my feet a bit, trying not to look down in the drop. So, would you like to stand up here and help me with the rope? Or would you like to help Yao instead? What? We have a better chance to find your money if one of us helps search. I do not think Yao knows what a double eagle looks like. And I have never seen one. No, no, that, that's what I wanted to talk to you, tell you about, Nick. This isn't a normal mine. There's something evil in it. It's not very nice of you to speak about my bosses in that manner. Stop joking! Who said I was joking? This, if this thing wasn't natural, Nick. I saw it. I crossed my arms. Well... Actually, I never saw it, but I felt it! I don't think anybody should be down here alone. Yao is alone right now. I wince. That's different, Nick. I don't know him like I know you. But I know him. I can hear both of you still. What? How? We're in a cave. Voices carry far. Oh. Since I am down here in this small space, risking my neck for your money, why don't you come down and help me look? That sounds like a great idea. No, it doesn't! Why would you say that? I've been by myself during work on many occasions. Something evil has never come for me. Shit. If I go help Yao, Nick will be alone. But if I ask him to go help, I'll be alone might tempt that thing to come out of hiding. Then we might all be in danger. If we aren't already. We are running low on time, friends. Alright, I'll do it. Thank you. I'll keep the rope steady and watch as you go down. I nod as he hands me the rope. It feels damp and wiry in my paws, but coarse enough to keep my grip. I swallow as I crouch, lowering myself down off the edge. I don't remember there being a drop in the original way we got there. Hmm. I close my eyes as I swing side to side on the rope over the abyss. You're right, Sam. 
fuck no, fuck no! Yeah. Just take it one hand at a time. I listen, still not trying to look left or right. I feel like I'm being stared at from multiple directions from places I can't see. My fur bristles and I slide down one segment of the rope, separated by what feels like figure eight knots. My whole body twirls slowly as I descend another segment. I open my eyes, and everything's a muddy brown, lit by Nick's cap. I look to my left and see a cluster of rocks sprouting from the side of the mountain. It's a different sort of sight than I'd have expected to find in the sturdy cave. What's that, Nick? Looks to me like a hefty vein of quartz. Quartz. That's the rock we collect in Hall. When we're not looking for gold, that is. You're a natural miner, friend. Huh. <laughs> it's... real pretty. My feet touch the cold stone on the ground. Oh good, you have arrived. Tiger's voice comes from the gap in the rock near my near my knees that he slid through earlier. I lie on my back and squirm, scooching through the gap as well. Jesus. I lay there for a while, sandwiched between a layer of stone, feeling like I'm that I'm stuck. Then I feel the edge of an opening with my arm and pull myself through, letting my whole body slide through, letting me breathe easy again. The space I fall into is tall enough to stand in. Yeah, I was holding a lit taper, standing against the rock wall. The other pit's over there. This is half as deep as the second, but it leads to a narrow path, so I hug the wall. The tiger crouches to his knees and hops down another slope. I follow him, and immediately feel uneasy. There it is. The wall is low here, in a familiar way. We're in the room where I killed Jack. The tiger pulls another taper and a matchbook out of his satchel. He lights it and then hands it off to me. The shine of the light may help find any misplaced metal. I'm sure you can tell, but this is where we found the body. I hold up the candle and shine it on the walls. Too many thoughts are coming to me at once. This is the place he brought me. How did you find him here? Nick was the one who noticed the smell. But we brought his body back through the tunnel, not through the vertical pathway. Again. How did you know where to find him? And how did you know about a vertical passageway? The tiger looks a little more uncomfortable now. Because I was the one who initially told him about this passageway. I thought it would be funny to show him the flakes of gold leaf I found here. But then he started telling stories about how he found a lot of gold there, and started telling many people to come here. Myself included. But few did. I knew that if there had been anything here, it would be long gone. This is a natural part of the cave that existed long before the mine. There was some indication that it was used by smugglers to transport goods, or by people who lived in this land long ago. But did Jack know about the vertical entrance? He did not. I can't even clearly see the passage that we came from, even though I'm looking straight at it. The shadows of the cave, as well as its vertical nature, hides it well. How did you discover something like this in the first place? This is an old cave, but it is an old mine as well. It is built in ways that don't make sense. Until, of course, they do. The foreman knew about, know about some of them. They give it away with their commands. I give you my brow narrowing. Why did you reveal one of your secrets to us by taking us through the vertical passage? Because Nikolai is a trustworthy man, and he has convinced me that his friends are too. For all of his flaws, bad judgment is not one of them. I rolled a look at him, my tail twisting. What do you mean, his flaws? He snores. I chuff. You should live lighter, my friend. You will have a healthier heart. My emotions aren't any of your business. I meant your organ. I don't play any damn music. The tiger sighs. 
Regardless, I know plenty of secrets about these caves. But you should be searching for a shine right now, not secrets. I do see something shine. Hold my candle up close and recognize that it's Jack's sack of rocks. But they're covered in a ring of charcoal. As if they had been set aflame. But the rocks inside... This is gold. Excuse me. I held up one of the rocks. It shined in my hand the exact way a nugget would. And there was a softness to it. Like it could bend between my fingers. Look. I am looking. You're holding charred remains. I flinch as the gold I'm holding crunches in my hand like a shell. I let it go I let go to release ashes. Then I stare at the pile again. The luster is gone. You know a lot about this place, Yao. Are there fumes in here that can make you see things that aren't really there? Such things can exist, but they're not here to my knowledge. I get to my feet again and blow the dust off my paws. I ran into a tent earlier today. There were lots of men there. One of them said he used to work at the mines. Maybe you know him? Perhaps. And that's not important. They were using opium, I think. I ended up inhaling some. Then I started seeing all sorts of weird stuff, just like the gold just now. And maybe like the breath. And the thing that slithered on the ground. Maybe it ain't real. Maybe I'm just nuts. Or maybe it was just a vision of what's to come after I die. Either way, I don't like that I can't trust my senses anymore. But those are all I have. And now... Now I'm seeing yet another thing sparkle in front of my face. And shining somewhere higher than my head. It's just a flame from his taper. But I imagine for a second that it's my golden eagle. It's not hard to picture. Between Yao's paws, I can envision my glittering gold coin. I can picture him rolling it between each paw pad, studying it. Months of my life are summed up in that coin. My head between so many knees. My legs lifted and spread so many times, stinging from every poke and prod, and I can imagine that tiger's eyes shine in the dark too, a ghostly white. And it's suddenly apparent to me how close his body is to the rock wall exit and how far away I am, crouched on my knees. A horrible feeling washes over me. This feels too familiar. But then I feel his hand on my shoulder. I don't think it's here, friend. A coldness wells up in my chest. Somehow, I felt it wouldn't be. Those charred marks weren't there when we first found Jack. Somebody else has been snooping around here. They might be the ones who have your money. I slam the dirt with my fist, wishing it was that bastard's skull again. You really have ruined me. Even though you're fucking dead, I killed you. And you still manage to ruin me! The noises I make fill the cavern. I do not mean to be insensitive to your suffering, but myself and Nikolai have run out of time. I wish to escort you out of the tunnel safely, but I will have to leave you behind if you do not follow me now. What's the point of leaving? I have no savings and no prospects. Tiger growls. If you do not give up... I will share another one of my secrets that may save your life later. But first, do you truly wish to tell the meaningful people in your life that you chose death over lending them your strength? We left Nick alone at the top. I bite my lip and look away, embarrassed, still feeling hot tears roll down my cheeks. I rise, bending my knees. That is what I thought. The tiger takes a step forward, then stops dead in his tracks. His ears splay back and he looks back at me. I think it's the first time he's looked scared. We have to go. Now! The journey upwards is harder than the descent. I'll lead. The tiger presses his body to the north wall and sticks to it, shimmying up the side of it. He raises his hands, grunts, and hoists himself upward, disappearing into the ceiling. 
I follow as best I can, but not as quick. When I'm in the space Yao was, I feel clusters of rocks that are easy to grasp. But a horrible feeling overcomes me. Something moved out of the corner of my eye near the ground entrance. There's a clicking sound. I haul myself upward, my legs dangling in the air before I climb higher, reaching the platform. I hear the deeper sounds of breathing below me. And so then loud, sudden sniffs. Above me, Yao's tail is barely, just barely disappears up the next gap. He's going much faster than I've seen him go before. I don't want to address it. I, I don't want him. I don't want to think about it. I just want to leave. I walk as quickly and quietly as I can to the second platform, grimacing when I remember that you have to squeeze through the space. I hoist myself up and get into the supine position, squirming back and forth as the rock touches both my back and chest. The noises behind me aren't getting any louder, but they aren't getting any quieter either. I cover my mouth to gasp when I finally free of the rock, but I don't dare look back and get on my feet as quickly as possible. Yao is about three-fourths of the way up the rope already when I get to the base of it. Wait until I'm at the top. It might not be able to support both of us at the same time. I nod, hoping he can see me and grip the rope for comfort. I do not hear anything behind me, but I do not dare look back. Was it ignoring us when we were together? Was it waiting for me to be alone? Or did I just take a while, or did it just take a while to pick up my scent? If it were looking right at me through the slit of the rock, and that's a big if, it would only be able to see my ankles. So once I start climbing, I feel a lot safer. I just have to wait for him to reach the top. He's almost there now. But I hear clicking again. Then slithering. Then breathing. It's not too close, but it's not very far either. Whatever it is, it can climb. He doesn't have to call my name when I see him disappear over the ledge. I lift myself, climbing as quickly as I ever have in my life. Arm over arm, muscles straining, hands stinging. I get closer to the top. My whole body is spinning with the rope as I ascend. I can't hear the noises anymore, but I can't ignore the possibility that something slithered out of that gap. Whatever's down there, if it's down there, could tug on the rope and make it snap, pulling me down with it. I'm not safe until I reach the top. Not till I'm on that platform. When I finally get there, I see Nick on the other end of the rope, keeping me steady while Yao takes a breather. I pull myself up onto the rock, let out a raspy gasp, and breath on all fours, feeling my sweat drip to the stone below me. Something big crouches over me. It's Nick, offering his paw. No luck. I pull Nick into a tight hug, burying my snout in his neck, squeezing my eyes shut. This time, I don't smell the mine. It's just him. All him. No luck. I pull apart, remembering the tiger's presence again. I can't read his expression as he watches us, arms crossed, leaning against the wall. But he was quick, and followed my instructions. You really know how to pick them, Nick. Again, Yao! This is about helping my friend, not about gauging his talents. Unfortunately, this didn't help him at all. No, it didn't. But I know something that will. There was a reason I know there is a reason that I knew Jack was lying to me. That reason is that I know where the real gold is. What? And you withheld that? Nick grabs the tiger's collar and he pushes the badger off. Of course I did. But the gold is not mine unless I can extract it and move it without discovery. And for that, I'm going to need help. Or else it might as well be hand-delivered to Mr. Hendricks or one of his lying foremen. We could all be set for life. But not another word for about this from either of you, or the deal is off. Nick looks put off, but he nods in resignation. Yao yeah, does not seem like the sort of man who would lie to Nick, but I will never believe another story about gold so long as I live. Not until I see it. And even then, my senses may not be immediately reliable. If he's telling the truth, I could be saved, but if he's lying, I will protect Nick. I see the rope suddenly go taut. So does Yao. Neither of us mention it to Nick, but we start to leave briskly. We go the way we came from, eventually coming upon the large center room of with, the, with the shaft. I'm happy to be close to the entrance. We sneak past the foreman's cabin again, but this time see no silhouette in the yellow light. 
He'll be on the first floor at this time. We break into a jog, turning corners until we see the light from the shaft. As we make it outside, we see my, more miners pushing carts across the plains. And a familiar tawny coyote staring directly at us. So oh, shit! Samuel! Oh god. I freeze. The coyote walks across the field briskly. He's coming from the direction of a noisy jet black automobile with a slick white hood. And it's hard to pay attention to the machine when he's enra when the enraged looking coyote is storming towards us. What the hell is he doing here? Badger opens his mouth to answer, but the coyote holds up his paw. Don't even speak, Nick! That was a rhetorical question! Do you know how bad y'all look with him being here? SHOWING UP NEAR A CRIME SCENE! I don't know what to say. He's not wrong, and we're caught. I feel like lying more will only make this worse. But somehow, I can't bring myself to speak. The odd puttering in the sound of his vehicle comes to a stop, and the big coyote turns around. A large ram, oh fuck me, exits the machine. Light shining from the glossy black door, and an ever or even larger wolf, wolf steps out of the opposite side. Oh, God. He walks across the quarry towards us as well. There's a look of terror in Yao and Nick's expressions, but they quickly hide it, turning their expressions blank. The ram chuckles warmly. I didn't drive you out here to make a scene, Sheriff. Now, what manner of rigmarole is unfolding here in front of me today? Just a standard investigation procedure, Mr. Hendricks. An investigation procedure? Now, I respect your authority, Sheriff Adler, but there will be no shakedown of my employees on my watch. This cougar ain't your employee. The ram looks me up and down, slowly. Then he smirks. So he isn't. I'd remember hiring an albino if I had. But he wished to be. I looked to my left, surprised. It's coming from Yao, but it doesn't sound like him. His accent is much thicker, and his words aren't clear. Oh god, I don't want to fucking do a stereotypical Asian accent. This man, very strong. Expressed interest in work. Great promise. I want to show I want show him where we work so he could believe in the work easier. James is smiling brighter. William very much isn't. A prospective employee. Excellent. Broad shoulders, strong hands, a straight posture. You have a soldier's build. I never like it when people say that. Hendrix Mining Co. would be nothing without our strongest men. We're always looking to pack in more muscle. It is an institution, sir. Quite right you are, my boy. Yeah, I was a grown man, you doddering cunt. Force a smile, nodding. So there you have it, Sheriff. No worms beneath that rock to sniff at. I've never seen an angrier expression on William's face in my life. Feel free to scope wherever you wish, of course. Perhaps you'll find cooperation easier when you put your best foot forward, eh? He shakes his head and winks as he tisks. Pay my office a visit tomorrow. The ram points his cane to a building sitting above the quarry that's nicer than any I'd ever seen before. Thank you for considering me, sir. No trouble at all. No trouble at all. The three of us waste no time in leaving as quickly as we can. William didn't even look at us as we leave, but his bushy tail thrashes from side to side as his arms rest on his hips. Nick and Yao leave me telling me they have to get back to work, but they tell me I should hang around. I don't like to think about what would happen if William catches me alone. But I don't like to think about disappearing without the folks at the hip knowing where I am. So I have to decline. Nick shakes his head. Yao takes out a piece of paper, writing down their address. I put it in my pocket, then head my way back to the brothel. When I get there, I check in with them to let them know that I'll be busy tonight. 
Dara has me pick up some deliveries to make up for the loss of time tonight, which I can't begrudge her for. Just some food and cleaning supplies. Time passes slowly. It's been a long day. By sundown, I'm ready to meet with Nick and Yao again. I follow the street address. The shacks aren't too far from the remains of the press. Near those opium tents. We've seen this building before. But when I arrive at the address, it isn't much of an upgrade. Nick's dwelling is, as the Badger had told me before, a shack. It's one of many clusters of similar looking wooden buildings with slanted roofs and a single small porch. Clothes lines are hooked between the ones close enough together. I knock at the door and hear heavy steps. I see Nick's familiar face at the screen door and he unlatches a few locks, letting me in. Not that I think any intruders could be kept out of the screen door if they wanted to break in. I haven't been inside this building until today. The porch opens up to a small, very small foyer with a coat rack and ten locked metal safes aligning the wall. I immediately notice the mix of sour, earthly, and earthy and woody smells that fill the cabin. Inside the screen door, there is a grubby-looking kitchen no bigger than ten, fo ten square feet with a wood stove, a sink missing one of its handles, and an oven. To the left of the rest of the cabin, two sets of bunk beds align the north and south wall, and one bunk is on the west wall. I see calendars, poster clippings, and photographs plastered to the walls inside the bunk beds. Some of the beds use dividers to block out the view of the others. Some of them hang their clothes between beneath their other bunks, using them as curtains. But there's next to no sound insulation. I hear kicking and scrabbling from one of the bed, from one bed behind a divider, and the ruffling of bed sheets behind another. Somebody else out of sight is scraping a bowl loudly. Nick takes a seat on one of the floor levels of the bunk bed, crouching so his head doesn't hit the top. His bunk is covered with practical things, such as a cork board and a calendar. There are other things, too. Pictures of ornate buildings in a city. Three smaller badgers and a larger woman. Some frilly, delicate desserts that I had never seen before. He also has a wooden yellow duck sculpture on a bed frame shelf. Looks slightly cross-eyed. Yao climbs the bed above him. His space isn't as decorated with objects, surprisingly, surprising to see no photographs or nothing. Just a few slips of posted paper with characters in vertical rows that I can't read and don't recognize. The wooden shelves going to his ceiling are filled with porcelain pots and teacups. I take a seat next to Nick under Yao. I'm so sorry about earlier. His voice is barely a mumble. A sudden cough behind one of the screens reminds me again that we have to have next to no privacy here. It's not your fault. My voice is barely a whisper. That coyote's been following me all day. Should have known he'd show, considering his belligerence. No. We took a risk we did not have to take. And we have nothing to show for it. He's right. This is bad. I really don't mind. I do. That policeman grates on me. He isn't so bad. Whenever he isn't using his tricks against you. His tricks can be useful. I just prefer when he uses them on other people than me. And there's the hitch. Will he continue to follow us? Knowing him? We all know he'll be back, but he won't be able to follow us into the mines. Then your friend must join us our next join our next shift. Won't somebody start noticing me lurking around the mines? Not if you actually work here. What a shame that I never will be. You should at least, the very least, apply, even when if you decide not to. Otherwise, you will make Yao look like a liar. Well, he is a liar. Sam! It is important that my employers do not know that. I have carved out some level of trust. I scratch my whiskers as I hear Yao shuffling around above me. 
For how long? Yeah. No more than a week. Maybe two hours during the night. There's no way they'd hire me in that godforsaken place for just two hours a shift. Well, you'd be helping us when you aren't on your shift. They will give you assignments during the day. No assignment will take only two hours. The foremen do not set us loose into the mines without orders or supervision. There's sudden giggling coming from behind one of the screen dividers. I don't like that it sounds so close, despite not being able to see a damn soul. We should sleep now. He looked at me. It may be prudent to spend the night here. We have two empty beds, but I recommend the top bunk next to me. When he says that, I take a closer look at the bed next to him. There's nothing on the wall. Nothing at all. No sheets, pillows, on the mattress, nothing. The bed on the bottom bunk, on the west wall, is the same. Nick hands me his blanket. I hear myself stammer. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't. This weather is too hot for my blood anyway. It's freezing during the night, Nick. Freezing? <laughs> he stifles a laugh. You don't know what freezing is. Take my gift, or I'll be insulted. Fine. Nick waits for me to get to the top bunk before he blows out his candles. Then I close my eyes and wait for sleep to take me. I feel my consciousness fade. As my eyes snap open and I wipe the cold sweat from my brow, I lie awake in this little bed. There's a chorus of snoring all around me. I hear tossing and turning in the bunks all around me. Some moaning. Another man is crying in his sleep. Moonbeams shine through the windows, making the room glow. I turn around on my bunk to look for Yao, maybe to wake him. But he's staring into the ceiling, wide awake, head in his arms. He catches my gaze and stares back. I beckon him forward with my paw. He shifts around in the bed, turning to me. I made my voice as low as possible. I meant to ask you something earlier. It's about when we were in the down in the mines. Down in that room you found him in. You felt something before we left those mines, didn't you? The tiger stares hard. I did. So did I. And I heard it too. When you went on ahead. What is it, Yao? I don't know. It didn't walk or sound like any miner I had heard before. But that's not the first time I've encountered something shambling around in the dark down there. But what do you think it could be? My goal is to never get close enough to find out. Might be worth knowing. It could be a wild animal. And if it is... Well, then you know. And then you're enclosed in a tight space with a wild animal. Likely a hungry one at that. That's true. Good night, friend. I cross my arms and sink into my mattress. Good night. Oh, fuck. Not as action-packed as some of the other updates. But we are... We are getting by on the skin of our ass. And I do mean ass. Well, I can only imagine what the hell's gonna happen in the next one. How long will it be until all hell breaks loose, eh? I guess we'll find out next time. But until- well, maybe. If shit hits the fan next time. Or in whatever. Later down the line. Thank y'all very much for watching. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the trained unprofessional, and you're not. Stay safe, everyone.